In this video, you'll learn how to use Miro, formerly known as Realtime Board, and customer journey maps on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to look at some of the more advanced features and also end with some of the pros and cons on when you should and shouldn't use Miro. Let's jump straight in. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you build organizations that put people at the heart of their business. And in this video, this video is the second video of a series of two, where we, where we are looking at how to use Miro to create customer journey maps. If you haven't seen the first video, check it out over here. We've created the basic structure of our customer journey map. And now we're going to look at using this journey map and Miro on a day-to-day -day basis to actually realize uh, customer-centric change. So let me share my screen and jump back into the map that we've created in the first video. The map looks like this. It's a super simple map just to show you the basic building blocks of a customer journey map. And we're trying to map going to the zoo. Now, probably the first thing that you'll try to do is to move things around in your map. You, you're going to remove stuff, you're going to add stuff, and a good journey mapping tool should make that really easy. Now, Miro has a few options that help you to do that, um, and let me show you what they are. So let's say in the before stage, we want to add a third customer activity. Um, let's just copy park your car and uh, we can just duplicate this and I don't know, this would be wait in line to get in. We've added a, a third card, but now our during uh, uh, phase uh, doesn't or is not in the right place. So we can pretty easily drag that around, move it and make the before stage bigger. That's pretty easy. If you, if you want to remove and add stuff, uh, you can pretty easily do that. But how about when we want to add something between buy tickets and park your car, some, somewhere in the middle of the map? Well, uh, Miro makes it really easy to select multiple objects. Oh, sorry, wrong click here. And we also need to change this one, of course, and then just to drag them around a little further. That makes it pretty easy to do that. So you can, you can uh, select multiple stuff, uh, things you can, uh, when you right click, you can, I think you can even group them uh, somewhere. Uh, we need to make this one a little bit bigger and smaller. So dragging stuff around, uh, grouping things, aligning things. That's what I really like about Miro. It aligns uh, stuff pretty well. Uh, that's pretty easy to do when your map isn't that big. If you don't have that much information in your map, you can do this manually. Once your map starts to become bigger and you have like 25 cards here and you need to move everything around, it will be a more burdensome task, but uh, it's if, if you're persistent enough, it's doable. Now, the other thing that's super important in using customer journey maps in day-to-day -day operations, that is, collaboration that's that's key if you're using a tool customer journey mapping tool that doesn't allow collaboration you're just making a nice image so miro is really built around collaboration and you have a lot of options if you click the share button over here you see you can invite people you can change uh, them uh, from editing commenting viewing uh, this is basically the same way google docs does this if you are familiar with that you can invite people from your team. You can invite people from outside of the organization. It's super flexible. And what I really like is you can uh, al almost any uh, card option information layer, you can tag people. And you do that, for instance, by this was one of the comments that we placed over here. I could have mentioned a colleague over here. Hey, uh, Chris, take a look at this and if i would use an at sign chris would get a message so in terms of collaboration uh, i think miro does an excellent excellent job the next thing that's super important when you're using a journey map on a day-to-day -day basis is 
sort of knowing the states of something, who is working on what, what is being improved, what is being uh, removed, uh, what, what has priority in this quarter. And a way, there are a few ways to do this in Miro. You can use colors. Um, most shapes allow you to add a color, um, like we could make some things purple. Uh, and once we know what purple means, um, we can pretty easily see that. Another option would be to use tags. Uh, tags are almost everywhere in Miro. So re let's make a remove task um, to these uh, to these to remove uh, move tag. Oh, we can use this one, right? And now they have the tag on. And maybe let's say this one should be uh, improve and let's make this one green like i said let's make this one improve green create so this makes it pretty easy to see what is what who is working on what um, and create priorities and if you click uh, down below here you can see let's find the right uh, option Right, you can see the cards over here. You can see the tags over here, and uh, that makes it pretty easy to um, sort of navigate and see who is doing what. When you're collaborating on a map, which you always should, the next thing you probably want to know is: Did Chris actually do the thing I want? I wanted him to do, or I asked him to do, or what did he add? What did they change? So. Uh, the way to do that is by looking at our version history. Miro has this and it's excellent. It's called activity. It's down below over here. And you can see all the changes that have been made to the map since you last log in. And you can, um, yeah, you can go back, I think, even uh, in the map. So this, this might be a subtle thing, but once you start using maps, as a as a day to day tool, this will become crucial. Um, so, and this is really well integrated in Miro. The next thing, um, at some point, you are going to want to present your map to the management board, and you're not going to do that in an online tool. Probably you might, but you're not. So you'll want to uh, export this uh, map and show pieces of it or the whole thing. Um, and Miro has a few options to do that. You can save it as an image. Um, in the free version, you'll get a watermark and you can save it as a high resolution image, but at least you can export it. Uh, now we've got an image and we can uh, save it as a PDF. But first we need to create a frame. We're not going to go into that, but it works and it wor looks uh, pretty decent. So exporting also is really, really well integrated in Miro. Now let's look at some of the features that I really like about Miro and some of the things I wish that would have been in there and uh, wrap up with sort of looking at when Miro would be suited for you. When would you, when would I recommend uh, that you use Miro? So the first thing we need to get straight is Miro isn't a dedicated customer journey mapping tool. It is a whiteboarding tool, which allows you to have a lot of flexibility, um, which is great. When you know what you're doing, when you know what the structure is, when you know how to create journey maps. But if you don't know what you're doing, that flexibility could also be a downside. What's also really nice is the embedded icon finder and Google image search. Although again, I recommend you use real images from your research. And overall, I must say that Miro is a pretty polished experience. Like selecting things, aligning things, the way they handle colors, the way they handle fonts, it just feels done right. And the, the, the usability is just, yeah, it's it's solid. It's, it's a good product to use. And let's not forget the collaboration features. I think, uh, like I said, this is a must have in any professional tool you want to use for customer journey mapping. Miro has done this really well. Um, the sort of different stages where you can share uh, maps like editing, commenting, and viewing. You can tag people, you can view the activity. That's all sort of crucial, I think, for using a journey mapping tool. And that's all embedded into Miro done really well. I think Miro is really good as a journey mapping tool, but it's not 
perfect. There are two things I wished somehow would have been in there. The first one is um, has to do with the detail levels. Yes, you can add additional detail to cards using comments or using the card type and adding details there. But when you want to expand and collab collapse those details, you would either need to click uh, individual uh, cards or you would need to go into the overview. There's no real easy way to sort of hide and show lanes and sub lanes. That would be that if that would be the case, it would be perfect. The other thing is that has to do with adding and removing items in your map. Like I showed you, you can group things, select things, lock things. That already makes it easy to drag stuff around. But when you, if uh, no when you will make bigger maps and you will make bigger maps once you start using them on a day-to-day -day basis it it becomes tedious at some point you'll be dragging so much around you'll be spending so much time realigning things that it's just i don't see that happening for a long period of time so yes mirror makes it easy to align stuff but uh, at some point you'll run that will become a limitation so it would have been nice if things would snap uh if you could sort of add things in between a collapse i know we have to be honest mirror is a whiteboard it's not a journey mapping tool so i i know why it's not in there but it would have been nice let's talk about pricing for a second miro has a free plan which i've been using you can use it play around and see if it works for you they also have paid options of course uh, and i think the basic option starts at 15 dollars a month if you pay monthly and they have all also team uh, accounts stuff like that um check it out i'll link to it down below now when would i use miro as my journey mapping tool if i don't have any other tools Probably when I'm in a project where the scope is limited, the team is limited, and I know I will be discarding the map after this project, um, where I know that we won't have to change the map for a long time, then Neuro is probably a pretty good choice. It's a solid choice, the experience is good. Um, when you would like to create a map that's going to be the foundation of your customer-centric innovation steps for the coming months, where many people need to rally around, where many departments need to rally around, where you need more depth, I think there are better choices out there. But Miro has definitely has a good place in the customer journey mapping tools uh, spectrum. I'm pretty excited about Miro. Uh, it, it has surprised me uh, really well. What are your experience? Have you used Miro as your customer journey mapping tool? What are your tips and tricks for using it? leave a comment down below and if you want to continue learning about how to create maps that actually make an impact on your customers and your business check out this next video because that's what we're going to talk about over there see you in this next video